How's it going everybody? Welcome to We Do Tech and also to a, another Tech News video where I go over all the latest news that happened in the tech world, especially over the weekend now. So I do hope you guys had a lovely weekend and ready for the new week. But anyway, starting off with the first topic, the RTX 3050 might be getting a second version. This is all determined by the availability of the GA106 SQ GPUs though. Some rumors suggest that Nvidia might actually have a backup plan to produce more 3050s if there is a shortage again of the GA106 GPUs. Then they will actually introduce a new version that's going to use the GA107 SKUs that is mainly used in the 3050 gaming laptops. Another mention in the rumor is that the GA107 chip will have a lower TDP of 115 watts instead of the 130 watts. Now there might be a bit of a performance difference between the two. We can't say for certain as of yet, but once actually available or if it's actually available we shall see and possibly do like a comparison as well but uh, that is only if there is actually a shortage of a ga106 chips which kind of looks to be somewhat uh, because there are still some uh, RTX 3050s available, especially like here in South Africa, you can get some of the more budget related ones. But for example, I'm busy doing a build with uh, the ROG 3 350. And when I looked at our pricing, for South Africa, there's no stock here. In the US, there's no really fair stock where uh, all of the prices ranges between like 600 to over a thousand dollars. So uh, there's stock, but overpriced stock. So possibly we will actually see the GA107 chips. And then next up, the sheer amount of greed going on with tech parts lately is just kind of sickening. And now Best Buy is just showing that again. Now Best Buy is currently the exclusive reseller of a founder editions of the RTX 30 series GPU, so you can only get it from them. And with the news now, this kind of just pisses everybody off a bit more because apparently you'll need to pay for their $200 yearly service subscription to actually get your hands on some of the GPUs. And this isn't even a way to actually keep scalpers away. No, you can still buy up to seven GPUs on a single shot as long as they are different models. But now with the $200 total tech service, customers have access to their special protection program, 24 seven tech support, and even Apple Care Plus services, which I believe a majority of people won't even need. You're gonna have to pay for that if you want to get a GPU. So technically now you're gonna pay an extra $200 if you just want to get a, a GPU from a Best Buy. I have to say I'm glad that here in South Africa we don't necessarily have those issues. Our prices are a bit high, but the majority is just stock that's an issue. But now let's say you just want to buy a single system or just a single GPU and I have to pay that $200 just for that and get protection program and 24 7 tech support which probably I'm, I'm not in the us not sure how good it is but honestly most of the stuff you can just figure out yourself but I, I don't know it's a bit it's a bit much all right then uh, next up another touchy subject is crypto mining something not a lot of people actually consider is with the amount of cryptocurrency that's uh, being a mine there's also a vast amount of electricity being used in conjunction a bit more than some countries actually <laughs> Intel has now said that their new mining chip that they are producing will be a lot more energy friendly. The chip apparently is expected to launch later this year and is supposedly a thousand times better in performance per watt against mainstream GPUs for sure 256 based mining. Now just a quick mention there, you don't really mine a sure 256 or the Bitcoin algorithm, you don't mine it with normal GPUs, you mine it with ASICs. So what they actually said there as well is, it's not entirely truthful because nobody mines Bitcoin with a normal GPU. It doesn't make sense. It's not worth it. But Intel says more information about the chip will be available at the International Solid State Circuit Conference, which starts on February the 20th. And then next up, while well, we have seen a lot of new releases on the CPU side for a basic PC use and gaming, the high-end desktop users have seen very little action apart from like the Threadripper WX a while back. Now that might actually change as soon as some leaks suggest that Intel is planning to launch their new Intel Sapphire Rapid AP CPUs this year. 
Now, rumors suggest that there's going to be four different versions available. The Sapphire Rapids SPXCSC, which will be a more server focus. Then the 112 LXCC, which will offer up to 112 PCI Express Gen 5 lanes, which will then fall more under the workstation platform. Then there's the SPMCC config, will offer a medium core account, but with eight channel memory support. And then lastly, the entry level SPR MSWS <laughs> mainstream workstation that will feature the same MCC dial but with a four channel ddr5 memory support now that is just the base of everything and there will be a lot more to cover once they're actually officially launched and then next up microtransactions in games are horrible especially when it's a pay to win structure well we might actually see it coming to our hardware as well in the future with intel planning to implement their software defined silicon feature on a new xeon cpus luckily for now not on our normal consumer grade cpus now it seems like this will first feature on the linux 5.1 version that's coming out later this year now also this does have some good and also some bad points to it number one is the cost Having to produce only a single CPU instead of multiple variants will, will definitely cut down on production costs. Now, with everybody's needs being different, you might not need every single feature on the new CPU, but you will still have to currently pay for it. With this new structure, you can get what you actually need and not pay for the rest. Now, the backlash Intel has been getting over this has been rough. But it's also because they haven't been entirely transparent about the whole thing either. Now, I honestly do think that this could be a good feature if they want to implement it, but it's all going to depend on the base cost. For example, if they're going to just produce i9s from now on, but you only need a budget like Celeron version or i3 version, and you don't need the 32 cores or that crazy amount of cores, you just need four or six, how much is that going to cost? Is it going to be the same price as what the original four cores Celeron i3 was? Or is it going to be more now because they needed to use higher quality silicon to actually produce the i9, but four core, six core i9. So it's definitely going to depend on the base cost of the original CPU. But in all honesty, I don't think it's going to work that well. There is going to be a lot of drawbacks for that. But of course, we will have to wait and see. And then next up, it does seem like we have a lot of Intel news today. And it's just going to continue with the next topic. Now, anyway, we just received the 12th generation CPUs only a few months ago. And we're already seeing some benchmarks leaks showcasing the 13th generation. It feels so, it just goes way too high. But it's the i9-13900K Raptor Lake from Intel. Now from the benchmarks, we're getting a 24 core and 32 thread for the CPU on the i9-13900, okay, just rolls off your tongue, which is a bit of an upgrade compared to the 16 core and 24 threads on the 12900K, which we currently have. Now the game that was benchmarked is Ashes of a Singularity and the 13900K was already as fast as the 12900K during its engineering phase, which does look quite promising as again it's engineering phase and there's plenty of months to actually improve in and fine tune the cpu for official launch now this is all very exciting and stuff but it kind of feels like they're releasing new cpus like every six months now so your cpu that you bought yesterday is going to be already old next week so the best approach is going to be just to wait forever because there's always going to be a new one coming out and you're never going to buy anything and then next up a tech sector that we have seen a major improvements in lately has been in monitors and alienware is set yet again to improve dramatically in this segment with their very first quantum dot OLED display. Now this new monitor has a 175 hertz refresh rate and a ultra wide resolution of a 3440 by 1440p with a 1800R curvature. 
uh, for us content creators this is just mind-blowing really it has a 99.3% DCI-P3 and 149% sRGB color range which is mind-blowing and also normal monitors have like a brightness range between like 250 to maybe 400 nits but this one it does peak at 1000 nits so you're going to get full hdr 1000 which just looks stunning but now don't expect this to be cheap though because remember it's also alienware and there's a new monitor so a retailing price is going to be for around 1300 dollars if scalpers don't get greedy and get their hands on it as well and then lastly cryptocurrencies has a grew massively in popularity of the last a couple of years we briefly saw Tesla accepting a Bitcoin as a payment, although nobody really do that for their cars last year, and of course pulling it back later on. And then it was also just the start as more and more companies are getting interested in the tech and also getting their hands on some of the very lucrative digital currency. But now the main concern for these companies has always been the way crypto has been mined. As we did mention earlier, it uses a lot, a lot of electricity and companies feel that it's not good for the environment but most likely they only care about their carbon tax credits so that's probably the reason and it's also the rumored reason why tesla actually stopped accepting bitcoin but now uber might be the next company to actually accept a bitcoin as a payment the CEO of Uber said, as the exchange mechanism becomes less expensive and becomes more environmentally friendly, I think you will see us lean into crypto a little bit more. So maybe once Intel's new chip actually comes out, digital currencies will become the new norm for mining everything. Definitely not, but in the future, possibly it might. But anyway, that's pretty much it. I do hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please like, share, subscribe, and comment like always. Also, all of the links and everything will be linked in the description below. So check those out. But anyway, thanks for watching, guys. And we'll check all of you next time. Cheers, guys.